be abounding with thanksgiving this morning. Amen. We've got what most people, a lot of people don't have. Now, we, we have blessings of, of a warm place to worship this morning. We have blessings of home. We've got blessings of, of a feast waiting on us when we get finished. We have all those blessings, but we also have the blessings of Jesus Christ, the blood that this gentleman was singing about a while ago. That man was homeless. It's amazing, his story. Uh, that man was homeless. He's got a lot to be thankful for, but he was singing about the blood. He was homeless, and the church took him in, and there was 20 families in that church, and they took turns with him, and they gave him a job. Uh, one of the men in the church gave him a job cutting grass so that he could earn some money for school supplies. Uh, one of the ladies asked him one day, why don't you sing for us at church? Why don't you sing? He said, I, I don't sing. Can you imagine that guy saying, I don't sing? Now, when I tell you I don't sing, I really don't sing, okay? Uh, but he said, I don't sing. And she said, I'll make you a sandwich. And he said he felt really guilty because he had probably already ate a thousand of her sandwiches. And he said, so he got up and sang. And people learned that he could sing. Uh, they did a video of him singing. And they sent it off to colleges. And he got a scholarship with a college with his voice singing he's actually sang in carnegie hall and different places and and although he's got all that to be thankful for what was he singing about what well, we've got so much to be thankful for the blood amen the blood if you're at ephesians chapter 2 stand with me as we read the first few verses and if you're not able to stand just honor god's word in your heart as you as you remain seated ephesians chapter 2 and you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in times past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us. Even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace are you saved. And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Look at verse 19. Now therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. Father, we thank you for this privilege that was paid for with the blood of Christ, that we can be adopted into your family. We're no longer strangers. We're aliens of this world, but we're no longer aliens from heaven. Our, our citizenship now is in heaven. Help us to never forget that as we worship you this morning and as we give many thanks for all the many things that you've given. Help us not to take any of them for granted, but especially help us to never forget what you did for us on Calvary. Father, I just pray that your word would go out strong and mighty this morning. I pray that I would get out of the way and I pray that the Holy Spirit would just move in a special way this morning. Speak to our hearts today, we pray. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. I tell you what, it helps a lot of times to know what you're thankful for. That young man that was singing that song had so much to be thankful for. He could look back and see where he had been. Amen. And, and where he was now. We can look back and see where we've been. That's what we just read. It talked about where we'd been, where we once were. Where we once were. We once was dead in sin. Notice that in verse 1. It said that we were dead in trespasses and sins. Now what can a dead man do? What can a dead man do? Nothing. A dead man can do nothing. And so many times we think we have something to do with our salvation. We think that we can reach out and grab Jesus. I'm going to tell you right now, we can do nothing. We're dead men. Amen? If there was a dead man laying right here and we was having his funeral today and he was laying there... And he was trying to reach for heaven. He reached up. I, I'd be the first one out the door. 
God's Word says that we're dead men. He's talking about dead spiritually. Now, we're not, we're not dead physically. We're here, but we're dead spiritually. We're, we're, we're dead spiritually. Look, look at it, what it said. We, 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 in times past, in verse 2, walked according to the course of this world. We're, we're not dead to this world, very much alive to this world. Very much alive, it says. We're influenced by Satan, as you see in verse 2 there. Uh, very all kind, according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. That's Satan. The spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. That, that same spirit that, that are in the children. The children of disobedience are those that have not obeyed, have not, have not yielded to the call of Christ to accept him as their savior. Uh, they're influenced by Satan. They're controlled by lust. Do you remember the day when you were controlled by lust? It says, among whom also we all, underline that all, we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And it's saying we all. None of us are left out. Thank God if, if we're not there anymore, we have something to be very thankful for. But we can't look down our noses at those that are remain in this position. We need to pray for them. We need to share the gospel with them. It says, but among whom we all had our conversation in times past. In other words, our conduct in times past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh, of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. This is what we were. We were dead in our trespasses and sins, very much dead to God but in spiritual things, but very much alive to Satan and his things. We were separated. Uh, we were separated from Christ. Look in verse 12. We were without Christ. And at the end of it, it says, having no hope and without God in the world. We should never forget what we once were. Because as we witness to others so many times when we're no longer there and, and we look, we have a tendency of judging people that are in this condition that we once were in. And we should never judge based on that. We, we should remember, I, all but the grace of God, I would still be there. Amen. Because he quickened us. I love how chapter 2 began. When I say we were dead to God, not in his eyes, we were dead as spiritually. There was no fellowship between us and God. But he quickened us, it says, as that verse begins in 1. He quickened us. He, he made us alive. He made us very much alive. He quickened us. That's what he did. Look in verse 4. But God, who in his rich mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us god's word tells us that he loved us while we were yet sinners while we were yet dead to spiritual things he loved us even when we were dead in sins it says in in verse five he hath quickened us together with christ by grace are you saved god's word tells us that we're saved by grace not of works amen uh, if you would look at matthew look back at matthew Chapter 7, Matthew 7, verse 21. This has to be, uh, for those that are not certain about their salvation, this has to be a scary, some scary scripture, some very sobering scripture. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. Not every one that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then I will profess unto you, unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Here's a picture of dead men trying to reach God with their works. We, as dead men, we can do no works. That would reach God. That's that's the de definition of religion, by the way. Religion is man doing works, trying to reach God. Christianity is God reaching down to man. God reaching down to man. God quickening us. Uh, think back of when you were quickened. Think back of when, when you were sitting in the pew and you realized maybe that day, or maybe it wasn't even in a pew, maybe it wasn't even in church, maybe it was... Uh, walking with a grandparent. I, I don't know what your salvation experience was like, but do you remember when that light bulb went off, when he quickened you and made you aware of your sinful condition? I think of uh, Lydia. And, and, and look with me in Luke, if you would. 
Luke chapter 16. Excuse me, uh, Acts chapter 16. We're going through Acts on Wednesday night. If you get a chance, come. We're, we're having a good time as we look through Acts. Acts chapter 16. Uh, Paul is preaching the gospel, and it says in verse 14, And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple of the city of Thyatira, which worshiped God, heard us. She heard Paul preaching. She heard them preaching. She heard them proclaiming God. And it says, Whose heart the Lord opened that she attended to the things which were spoken of Paul. Her heart was open. We pray, God, open the eyes of our heart. Open the ears of our heart that we may hear from you. And here, Here's when she was quickened. The eyes of her heart were open to the Lord, and she attended to the things which Paul spoke. And she was saved. It goes on to say in verse 15, And when she was baptized and her whole household, she besought us, saying, If you judge me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and abide there. And she constrained us. What was your salvation experience like? When, when did God open the eyes of your heart? When did he quicken you? He quickened us. He made us alive. Look at verse 6, if you would. Not only did he quicken us, make us alive, he hath raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. I've heard it said before, just take Jesus by the hand. No, let him take you by the hand. Amen? Let him take you by the hand. I, I remember as a kid, we my dad still has a small cabin up in the mountains on a lake. And as a kid, we were there. And uh, next door, my dad had had some property. He let my, his, my uncle, his brother, he either sold it to him or whatever. I don't know the details of it, but they built a cabin beside him. So all of our cousins, there were a lot of weekends we were there, and my cousins, and my, I had a brother and a sister, and so there were several of us there. We would be down in the cove swimming in the lake. And, of course, it's a very clear lake, a mountain lake, but when you go swimming, what happens? You stir up mud, right? It's muddy. You can't see the bottom. Uh, one of the most dangerous things that you can ever do is try to swim with an with a, uh, inner tube around you. You know, that was that was a poor man's life jacket. We, 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 we had a cabin up there, but... Uh, we had inner tubes that we swam with. My sister was swimming across the cove in one of these inner tubes, and what happened? It flipped over her head, and she went out of sight in that muddy water. We didn't know where she was. We saw it happen. We saw we saw as she come across. She went out of sight. She had seen enough cartoons that that all of a sudden we saw a little hand come up and the finger one. You seen those cartoons? You remember that cartoon? And now you're showing your age because a lot of the younger ones hadn't seen that. She held up that one finger, and then she went back under, and she was able to t take her tiptoes and bounce off the bottom again. She came up holding two. I, I guess if she had come up holding three, it would have been too late. But my cousin grabbed her arm. He saw her. He grabbed her arm, okay? It's so different. That, that, that's a good illustration there, but that's not what we do. We, we don't reach for him. He reaches down to us. He reaches down to us in our desperate, desperate condition. Amen. That's what God did for us. Why? Why did he do it? Verse 7 tells us that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness towards us through Jesus Christ. We are, we are his trophies. Uh, we are his trophies that, that he can set and show so that it, 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 it shows his exceeding riches to us, towards us. It's a testimony of others to others of what we have. You know, Jesus died on the cross. He died for everyone, didn't he? But not everyone comes to him. He deserves that everyone comes to him. What he did was for everyone. His blood was sufficient for everyone. Amen? But it's not efficient for everyone because not everyone takes advantage of it. It's only efficient for those that accept him, for those that come to him. It's very sufficient for all. He's, verse 7, that's why he did it, that he might show the exceeding riches of his grace. How did he do it? Look with me at verse 8. For by grace are you saved, through faith, and that not of yourselves. It's a gift of God. It's a gift. It's God's gift. That's how he did it. Not of works, lest any man 
should boast. We read earlier those that came to Jesus, and he said, Depart from me, I never knew you. They, they were trying their best to work. They were doing all this religious work, no doubt helping people, but they were trying to do that to reach God. I thank God, and, and this, this is hard to wrap your head around, or it was for me. Maybe it's not for you. But you, there's nothing that we can do that will make God love us more. There's nothing that we can do that will make God love us less. When we were as unlovable as you come, that's when he saved us. There's nothing we can do. He gives us the privilege of working. He gives us the privilege of, of serving him because he loves people. We serve others. When we serve others, we're serving him. Because it tells us in, in verse 10, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. We are to do good works, but those works aren't to, to, to make him love us anymore. How, how much more could he love us? He loved us so much to give his only begotten son. He couldn't love us anymore, could he? He loved us with all. But that is the debt that we owe. So many people, I think, work trying to repay the debt that he paid. That's impossible. We could never repay. But, you know, the debt that we owe, Paul talked about that debt. Paul talked about having a debt. He was not talking about a debt that we owe to Christ for what Christ did for us. We could never, never repay him for what he's done for us. The debt we owe is to fellow man, to tell them what we know. There's a preacher that I love to hear from time to time. He said he was nothing but a beggar that found bread, and, and he wants to spend the rest of his life showing beggars where to find the bread. That's the debt we have is to show the beggars where the bread is. Amen? That's how he did it. Why he did it. Look at verse 13, the song that we didn't get to see earlier. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. By the blood of Christ. One of these days we'll get to see that video of him singing. Uh, in fact, I want to say something. This is uh, not, it just crossed my mind. Talking about celebrations. Uh, Lewis just got back from a mission trip in Guatemala. And uh, we've talked about when we might could present that. And, and we've got a great idea. Here's what we're going to move forward with. Uh, if you don't have plans for New Year's Eve, come join us. On New Year's Eve, we'll figure out the time and make announcements. We're going to get together about 6 o'clock roughly on New Year's Eve. That's going to be a Sunday afternoon. We normally don't have service on Sunday afternoon, but we're going to celebrate the Lord's Supper. And after we celebrate the Lord's Supper, we're going to have a brief candlelight service. It's a brief candlelight service, it's, and it's one that will really speak to your heart. We've been privileged to be a part of one like this before, and it will speak to your heart. And and then we're going to have Lewis come and tell us about the mission trip. Maybe show us some pictures. Maybe some others that went on that mission trip can also be here and show us. And what they were doing, they were there showing the beggars where the bread was. Amen? Amen. That's what they were there doing. And it's all because of the blood of Christ through his blood. That's how God did it. And, and what are we now? We looked at what we once were. We've already looked at part of that. We are his workmanship, verse 10, created in Christ Jesus to good works. But also notice in verse 15, having abolished in the flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances for, for to make himself of twain one new man, so making peace. He's not a respecter of persons. The Gentiles, the Jew, all are one. It's, he took of twain and made one. that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. And came and preached peace to you, which were afar off, and to them that were nigh. For through him we both have access by one Spirit unto the Father. We have that access now. We don't have to go to a priest you can come to me and ask me to pray for you. I'd love to pray for you. I may come to you and ask you to pray for me, but I don't have to come to you. You don't have to come to me. You have direct access to the throne of grace. 
you can go directly to the throne of grace and pray. You don't have to have me to pray for you. Again, it would be a privilege to. And I may ask you to pray, but we can go directly because of what was done. We, we have access by one Spirit unto the Father, by the Holy Spirit. If you've been saved, you have the Holy Spirit living within you, and you have direct access. Verse 19, here's what we have to be so thankful for. Now, therefore, you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. We're no longer children of wrath that it talked about in verse 3. No longer children of disobedience that it talked about in verse 2. Verse 20, and we were built up upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth into a holy temple of the Lord, in whom ye also are built together for a habitation of God through the Spirit. He reconciled us with the blood. Have you experienced that this morning? Can you say in the verses that we read, turn with me, if you would, to Colossians. Just a couple of books over. You'll see Ephesians and Philippians and then Colossians. The two verses that I read earlier, Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 and 7. As you have, therefore, received Christ the Lord. What we talked about a while ago, we received him what? By faith. As you have, therefore, by faith received Christ Jesus the Lord. Walk ye therein. Now, how can a dead man walk? A dead man can't walk, can he? So this tells us that we're alive. We've been quickened. So, so live ye in him is what it's saying. Walk ye in him. It's telling us to live, be alive in him. Rooted. In other words, being grounded. Built up, be encouraged, and that's what we're to do. We're to encourage others in him. It says built up in him and established in the faith, as you have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. It's my prayer that every one of us here this morning are abounding with thanksgiving. Father, we come to you this morning. We're so thankful for so many things. For our families our children, and in some cases, our grandchildren. There may even be some here this morning with great-grandchildren. We're so thankful for our families. We're so thankful for the lives that you've given us. We're thankful for the weather that you've given us. We're thankful for the job you've given us. We're thankful for all of your protection and your provision. We're thankful for the healing touch that you place upon us. We could go on and on and on about all that we are thankful for, but this morning we want to focus on we're thankful for the blood. The blood that was spilt at Calvary. They tried to take and put Jesus in a tomb to hide the blood. But on the third day, he rose. Reconciling us. We're no longer dead to you if we've accepted Christ as our Savior. It's my prayer that this morning that some heart has been quickened, has been made alive. Help us to be obedient in everything that we say and that we do. In this time of invitation, Lord, speak to our heart. Father, I ask right now if there's one here that does not know you as their Savior, I ask right now that they would pray this prayer. Jesus, I believe that you are the virgin-born Son of God. That you lived a faultless, blameless, sinless life. And you died a vicarious death. You died in my place. 
he that had no sins but took my sins upon you and you died in my place and on the third day you rose you lived so that I can live and you've ascended to the Father taking up for me right now making intercession for me where Satan the accuser comes Jesus you're there making intercession I believe that you've done all of that for me forgive me for all that I've tried to do to reach you help me to accept right now all that you've done to reach down to me save my soul be the Lord of my life that I may live my life for you no longer living it for Satan no longer a children of wrath, no longer a child of disobedience. If you prayed that prayer, I pray that in just a few moments that you'd come forward and that you'd share that with us. God tells us that we're to tell others. Father, if there's one here this morning that has experienced the washing of your blood but have drifted away from you I pray right now Lord that you would draw them back to you I know that's your will that you want them to walk close with you just have your will and your way in the remainder of this service we pray may we show you our love by our obedience Give us the grace to be obedient to whatever you've called us to do this morning. I pray in Christ's name. Amen.